<coughs> Good afternoon. Uh, now we are going to uh, talk on uh, uh, relay chariots. Uh, Pali title is Ratha Vinita. Uh, only seven uh, steps uh, of purification are discussed in this uh, discourse. And it's uh, only, uh, even in the translation with uh, uh, abbreviations and so forth, uh, six pages. And these six pages discourse is explained in this book in detail. This entire book is the explanation of this discourse. This is called Path of Purification in English. Pali it is called Visuddhi Magga. This book is the explanation of the discourse that we are going to discuss today. So, there are only seven steps. As you uh, probably have read the discourse, it is very uh, short and simple. One day after observing the three months rainy retreat in a state called Jata Bhumaka, uh, bhikkhus assembled uh, before the Buddha, and um, when he was in Rajaga, in the uh, Squirrel's Sanctuary, Kalandaka Nivapa. Uh, Buddha gave uh, instructions. Buddha asked a question. Buddha gave uh, ten kind of talks that uh, somebody talks uh, when Buddha talked about talked to uh, some, some lay people who newly came to see him, he talked about uh, dana kata, sila kata, uh, sagga kata, uh, kama nang asad adi na okar sankhles nekhami anisansi and so forth. That is talking about uh, generosity, morality, going, the talk uh, about going to heaven, and then uh, 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 the benefit of sensual pleasures, and the danger, degradation, and uh, uh, losing dignity of and defilements of uh, sensual pleasures, and then uh, the benefit of renunciation. These are the talks he normally gave to new uh, lay people. But this talk he gave to a group of bhikkhus who have just finished their vasta. Here, Buddha talked, uh, topics were ten, ten topics. What are they? 
talk on uh, he asked <coughs> the bhikkhus who has spent the rain season went to see the blessed one and asked the king homage to the to him sat down and then the blessed one asked them bhikkhus who in my native land jata bhumi is buddha son uh, kapilavattu Uh, land is esteemed by the bhikkhus there by his companions in the holy life in this way so he was describing a particular type of qualities of a bhikkhu about whom other bhikkhus talk and he has who is the bhikkhu who has these qualities one having few wishes himself he talks to bhikkhus on fewness of wishes that is one self is having only few wishes and he talks to others of few wishes of course when you are mahitya the person with great uh, greed desire to acquire you always talk about greed acquiring and so forth so one who is uh, uh has one who has wishes for few things he talks about to other bhikkhus on fewness of wishes similarly content himself he talks to other bhikkhus on contentment secluded himself he talks to the bhikkhus on seclusion aloof from society himself he talks to bhikkhus on aloofness from society energetic himself he talks to bhikkhu to the bhikkhus on arousing energy attaining to virtues attained virtues himself he talks to bhikkhus on the attainment of virtue attain to concentration himself he talks to bhikkhus on attainment of concentration attain to wisdom himself he talks on to the bhikkhus on the attainment of wisdom attain to libera- uh, del- deliverance himself he talks to bhikkhu to the bhikkhus on the attainment of deliverance attain to the knowledge and vision of deliverance himself he talks to the bhikkhus on the attainment of the knowledge and vision of deliverance he is one who uh, advises informs instructs urges rouses and gladdens his companions in this holy life who is this person with all these 10 qualities then they said venerable sir it is venerable punna mantani putta he is so esteemed in the blessed ones native land by the bhikkhus there by his companions in the holy life now on that occasion when vasari putta was seated near the blessed one then it occurred to the venerable sari putta it is gain for the venerable punna mantani putta it is a great gain for him that is wise companions in the holy life praise him point by point in the tathagata's presence you know this is the quality of an arahant whose mind is totally pure and clean he did not express any jealousy he did not express any disappointment he was so delighted so pleased to hear of the noble qualities of another bhikkhu and he, in his absence he praised him 
Not only that, perhaps sometimes or another other we might meet the Venerable Purnamantani Putta and have some conversation with him. So desire, sort of a, a desire for discussing Dhamma eros in his mind. Venerable Sariputta knew Dhamma perfectly well. He was uh, Dhamma Bhandagarika, the treasurer, treasurer of Dhamma, and he, he le- has learned the Dhamma. One who knows Dhamma delights in discussing Dhamma. When the Buddha praised Venerable Punna Mantani Putta, he said, This is again for the Venerable Punna Mantani Putta. This again. I might have a discussion with him. I hope one day I will have a time to discuss Dhamma with him. Such a wonderful feeling he, uh, Venerable Sariputta had about Venerable Punna Mantani Putta. Not a scruple of jealous. Jealousy. So, uh, so Buddha stayed in Rajaga, and uh, as long as he he, he chose, he set out to uh, wander uh, by stage Savati. Wandering by stages, he eventually arrived uh, at Savati, and there he lived in Jeta's Grove, an art vindicate. Then the Punna Mantani Putta heard that the Blessed One, Blessed One has arrived in Savati and is living in Jeta's Grove, Anathapindika's Park. Then the Venerable Punna Mantani Putta set his resting place in order to, in, in order, and taking his outer robe and ball, set out to wander by stages to Savati. Wandering by stages, he eventually arrived at Savati and went to Jeta's Grove, another Pindika's part, to see the Blessed One. Now, Buddha talked about Punna Mantani Putta in his absence. Now, Punna Mantani Putta also, uh, after hearing that Buddha was there, now he comes to see the Buddha. So, after paying respect to the Buddha, he sat down at uh, one side, then the Blessed One urged, roused, gladdened him with talk on Dhamma. Then the Venerable Pundamantani Putta instructed, urged, uh, roused and gladdened by the Blessed One, talk on the Dhamma, delighting and rejoicing in the Blessed One's words, rose from his seat and after paying homage to the Blessed One, keeping him on one uh, on his right. That means this is what is called circumambulation. Uh, he circumambulated the Buddha and went to the bl- blinds, blind man's grove for the day's abiding. At that time, A certain bhikkhu went to Venerable Sariputta and said, Venerable Sir, we heard you express uh, your uh, desire to have a discussion with Venerable Punna Mantani Putta. Now he is in blind man's grove. So Venerable Sariputta also quickly picked up his sitting, sitting clothes and his mat and uh, went to see uh, Venerable Punna Mantani Putta. Uh, that was in the evening. Venerable Sariputta rose from his meditation and went to see him. As soon as he went there and saw Venerable Punna Mantani Putta, he did not waste one minute, but straight away he started the discussion. Is the holy life lived under the Blessed One, friends? Yes, friend. Who answered this? Purnamantani Putta. 
But friend, is it for the sake of purification of virtue that the holy life lives is is lived under the blessed one? No, friend. Then is it for the sake of, for the uh, say, sake of purification of mind that the holy life is lived under the blessed one? No, friend. Then is it for the sake of purification of view that the holy life is lived under the blessed one? No, friend. Then is it for the sake of purification of the purification by overcoming doubt? that the holy life is lived under the Blessed One? No, friend. Then is it for the sake of purification of purification by knowledge and vision of what is the, what is the path and what is not path, that the holy life is lived under the Blessed One? No, friend. Then is it for the sake of purification of knowledge and vision of the way that the holy life is lived under the Blessed One? No, friend. Then is it for the sake of purification by knowledge and vision that the holy life is lived under the Blessed One? No, no friend. Now we ask seven questions. For each question, he said, no, friend. That means he asked seven steps of purification. What are the seven steps of purification? <clears throat> First is morality, virtue. Second is purification of mind. Third is purification of views. Fourth, purification, of, purification by overcoming doubt. Fifth, purification by knowledge and vision of what is bad, what is not bad. Sixth, purification by knowledge and vision of the way. And sixth, the purification by knowledge and vision. And these are the seven. Let us spend a few minutes on what each purification, uh, trying, trying to discuss what each purification is, what each means. Purification of virtue. Uh, this is called sealer. There are various categories of sealer. Uh, for lay people, five or eight. Uh, For the monastics, ten or two hundred twenty-seven or three hundred eleven. Uh, ten for novices, uh, for fully ordained bhikkhus, two hundred twenty-seven. Actually, two hundred twenty-seven are the steps or the measures one should follow to settle disputes. But including those seven, there are 227 uh, rules of discipline, rules of training. For bhikkhunis, there are 311 rules of training. And uh, all these are divided into various categories. Uh, all morality. Uh, they are called Patimokka Sangvara Sila, uh, Indriya Sangvara Sila, Aji Parishuddha Sila, and Pachya Nisaja Prati Nisrita Pachya Nisaja Sila. Meaning, uh, Pahati Mokka Sangvara, that means uh, the rules that are uh, recorded in Pahati Mokka. Pahati Mokka means uh, 
preliminary practices, preliminary training for liberation. That is basic training. This is called Pubba Bhaga Patipada in Pali. And these are the uh, principles or code of rules of uh, training that uh, somebody who enters the monastic life should observe. The purpose of observing Sila is to cleanse the mind of various type of uh, habits, various habits, so that the life becomes relatively comfortable, easy to practice Dhamma and to gain concentration, to be free from remorse. Uh, then Indriya Sangvara Sila means uh, restraining our senses. Restraining our senses means not we not uh, closing our eyes when we see an object. But when we see objects or hear sound, smell smell, taste something and touch something or think something we have to be mindful. We have to be mindful not to let the mind be uh, obsessed with greed or hatred or de- greed, hatred or delusion. For instance, when we see an object, if the object happens to be pleasant, greed can arise in our mind. If the object happens to be unpleasant, hatred can arise in our mind. If the object is uh, neither pleasant nor unpleasant, uh, confusion can arise in our mind. So when we see, this is by seeing, also when we hear, smell, taste, touch or think, object, one of these three mental reactions can take place. And that would be a detrimental to our spiritual practice, calming our mind, cleansing our mind. Therefore, when the senses come across with sensory stimuli, we got to be mindful, not to let the stimuli bombard, obsess our mind, through the senses. That is what is called restrain our senses. Restraining means not to let this invasion, these things invade our mind by practicing mindfulness. That is called yoniso manasikara. If we have ayoniso manasikara, unmindful reflection, when we see an object or hear a sound, smell something, taste something, touch something, or think something, then we become a victim of greed, hatred and delusion. In order to avoid that, we got to remain mindful. This is called restraining our senses. Not closing our eyes when we see an object or hear sound and so forth. Just be mindful, not to let the mind be obsessed with these uh, obsessions. Uh, then Ajiva Parishuddha Sila means making our living by right means. For the lay people there is a right livelihood. Uh, the, for the monastic, there is a right livelihood. Lay people's right, right livelihood, they can do a job which does not involve in anything unethical, immoral. Similarly, there are right livelihood for the monastics. 
there is a whole list of things that the monastics are not supposed to do for living, like uh, doing business and dealing with uh, uh, selling and buying and uh, palm reading, uh, reading horoscopes uh, and uh, uh, practicing medicines. And, there are many such things that are prohibited for the monastic. If they make their living by doing those things, they are not right livelihood for the monastics. Whole list of cultivating lands and having cattle and pigs and farms, you know, animal farms and um, so many other things monastics are not supposed to do. For living. That is called Ajiva Parisuddhi Sila. Then Pratya Sannisrita Sila means uh, uh, the restraining or uh, virtue of uh, using four requisites. Pacha means food, clothes, medicine, and shelter. These are the four requisites. And monastics must use these four requisites with mindful reflection. And that also is a, considered to be a seal, moral thing. And these are the things that are explained in this book in about 200 or 300 pages in this book. <laughs> Path of Purification. That is Sīla Visuddhi, purification of morality. Why do we purify the morality? For the purification of mind. To purify the mind, uh, we have to practice uh, uh, concentration meditation, overcoming our five hindrances through the attainment of at least uh, first jhana. Until we attain the first jhana, our mind is not free from five hindrances. What are the five hindrances? Greed, hatred, sleepiness and drowsiness, restlessness and worry, and doubt. These are the five hindrances. When we practice uh, concentration, meditation, and we overcome these five hindrances. Purification of view is, the, is uh, understanding that defines the nature of the five aggregates which make up living being. Now, uh, in mindfulness practice, we learn to look at each of these five aggregates analytically. Why? In order to uh, remove our wrong views. Uh, yes, wrong views. Wrong view particularly depends on the wrong view of permanent self. That is what is called wrong view. Uh, in order to see uh, that none of the five aggregates is self, we got to analyze each aggregate. For example, form, form, rupa, as I mentioned the other day, uh, People, people tend to think form is identical with self. Uh, they take self as form and they think form is in the self or self is in the form. These are four ways of thinking about the self related to form. Similarly, feeling, perceptions, volitional formations, con and consciousness. 
for each of these five aggregates, there are four ways of thinking of permanent self. Therefore, we will have a twenty ways of looking at permanent self. With, that is wrong view. When we misunderstand, wrongly view, wrongly look at our five aggregates, these are the twenty types of uh, notions of self that we come up with in relation to five aggregates. In order to see this correctly, properly, exactly as they are, we have to take each aggregate separately and look at them analytically. For example, we take the form, then we find what is the form. Form is made up of four elements. And take each element and analyze each element up to last analyzable, analyzable or divisible uh, point. When we analyze and analyze and analyze, finally this so-called uh, earth element comes down to mere activities, like waves, motions, quark. We can never find anything permanent, eternal, tangible there. That is the nature of earth element. Similarly, when we analyze the water element, we come to the same conclusion. It is not something uh, permanent, tangible, eternal. It turns out to be mere activities. So is air element and fire element. When we come to that kind of understanding, this so total notion of uh, permanent self, self will totally vanish from our mind. That is called purification, then the, our view will be purified. Then the fourth is purification of overcoming doubt. Uh, to overcome uh, doubt, again we take the five aggregates and look at them in terms of uh, uh, dependent origination. <laughs> when we look at the five aggregates in terms of using the dependent origination formula, all we can see is some phenomena arises depending on another phenomena. When that phenomena fades away, this resultant phenomena does not arise. For example, there is a very famous uh, pity statement. There is a whole uh, summary of dependent origination. It is called Imasming Sati Idang Hoti. Ima sa upada idang upajati. Ima sming asati idang nahoti. Ima sa niroda idang nirujati. These are the four sentences we got to remember as a summary of dependent origination. What are the four sentences? When this is, that arises. No, no. no. When this is, that is. When this arises, that arises. When this ceases, that ceases. When at the cessation of this, that will be ceased. These are the four sentences. Now, all the five aggregates are subject to this uh, formula. We can use this formula to look at the whole five aggregates. And then, uh, whatever doubt we have with regard to self will vanish. The doubt is especially with regard to self. 
and other uh, kind of doubt about the doubt about the previous existence, the future existence, the uh, uh, come uh, rebirth, and so forth, are uh, subordinate to this very strong, powerful uh, doubt. Then. Purification by knowledge and vision of what is path, what is not the path, uh, is when we meditate, there comes a, a stage where uh, ap- there, there appears to be some kind of uh, light, clarity, purity, uh, uh, and uh, 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 brightness of mind, um, acceleration, uh, and uh, uh, ecstatic, ecstatic uh, uh, feelings, and so forth arise, then uh, one should not get carried away with them, but look at them, look at these experiences in terms of impermanence. These are all impermanent. They all are unsatisfactory. They all are without self. So in the light of these three characteristics, we look at those uh, extraordinary experiences. That way we realize this is not the path and this is the path. Then, number six, Purification by knowledge and vision of the way. Uh, that comes, that purification arises, it comprises the uh, ascending series of insight knowledge. Uh, there are various types of insight knowledge. Uh, basic nine of them are Udaya Bhaya. That is, knowledge of rising and falling. Bhanga. Bhanga means breaking up, uh, falling apart. And bhaya. Bhaya means fear. You know, this is one word I like to um, explain a little bit. In meditation, some people come to us and say, Bhante, I was, when I was meditating, I had a fear. So the person wants to give me an impression that the person has gained this inside knowledge. If you have fear in meditation, it is not inside knowledge. The kind of fear we, we, uh, is talked about here is a very special kind of fear. That is a wholesome fear. Wholesome fear. How fear can be wholesome? When you see all the sankharas, all conditioned things that arose in the past, all are impermanent, all are unsatisfactory, all are without self. All the conditioned things that you have now, they all are impermanent, all unsatisfactory, all without self. Then you come to inferential thinking, inferential awareness. Well, in that case, all the conditioned things in future, all the conditioned things in future are impermanent, unsatisfactory and selfless. Seeing impermanence, unsatisfactoriness and selflessness of all conditioned things of the past, present and future, there arises a fear that if I do not attain enlightenment now, I have to go through all these things once again. No matter how many times I will have to go through them again. That is the fear. That is where we will have a spiritual urgency, Dhamma Sangvega. Dhamma Sangvega, Vega means speed. Vega means speed. 
Dhamma Sang Vega means you speed up your practice by seeing this reality. You accelerate. You press your gas pedal a little harder to the to the to the board to the to go at the maximum speed. That comes from seeing this fear, the fear of not any kind of fear of dream, fear of seeing animals and demons and goblins and peters and you know tigers and so forth, snakes and not that kind of fear. This fear arises from inside. This is one of the inside knowledge. This, this is the inside knowledge. And therefore, this is what we call a wholesome fear, meaningful fear, fear that urges us to practice very ardently, earnestly, uh, to attain liberation. So now how many knowledges we got? Udhyavya, Bhanga, Bhaya. Then Adhinava. Friends, Adhinava is the means meaning danger. Danger of what? Danger of having again the same five aggregates in future. In this life the five aggregates have given up given us enormous amount of problems. We have to bathe it, feed it, clothe it and take care of when we are sick and um, so many things we have to, we have, over, we have, uh, you know, experienced in this life, and then again we think we may have it again. That is the danger. We see this danger. That is insight. It is not something negative. It is totally wholesome, positive experience. Insight. Then Nibbida. Nibbida it means uh, it has been translated into English as revulsion, uh, dis, uh, disappointment, not disappointment. R- revulsion is. Uh, uh, huh? Disenchantment. Right, that is another word. Disenchantment. I was thinking of another word to drive point uh, home. Uh, that is also one something very wholesome. This disenchantment or revulsion is something wholesome. How? How it is wholesome? It comes from inside. Inside. Uh, when I when we had this discussion once I uh, mention what the Buddha has said in San Nikaya about uh, little children. Children make uh, sand castles on the beach, and they really enjoy seeing that. Play with it, and they really, in their mind, they they are castles for them. Sometimes, uh, uh, little girls cook. Imagine, imagine, imaginary cooking, and they take, uh, you know, imaginary spoon, and then take something and give to you, and you also pretend to be eating. Then you also simply uh, open your mouth and uh, let the child put imaginary thing, and then you ah, tasty. <laughs> so the child goes and do, does something else, uh, making a soup, and brings to you and give. That's all imaginary. There is no soup. My child enjoys doing that. Sand castles and uh, all kind of play things they make and they really enjoy because they are very imaginative and they live in a very imaginary world and they really enjoy that. Then when, the, when that child grows up, maybe 10, 12 years old, and see another child, little child doing that, this child will laugh. This child will laugh because 
it is silly. Adults, they don't laugh. <coughs> I have seen it many times, children doing it. I would not laugh. I really, the adults think, see, this is their life. <coughs> this is their world. When that person grows up and comes to adulthood, that person turns away from that, engaged in something more meaningful, because the person is matured, understanding, and no longer interested in child play. That kind of turning away from all these mundane things is called revulsion or disenchantment. It comes from insight, comes from maturity, comes from understanding, comes from uh, knowing the nature, the truth. Therefore it is not something negative. It is very meaningful, wholesome, positive insight. That is why it is called insight. Then, uh, Banga, Bhaya, Adhinam, Nibhida. When you have that, then there arises another insight called Viraga. Raga means clinging, glue into something. Then that glue dries up. When you have this understanding, no longer do you have that glue, gluing, clinging, holding, grasping attitude. Easily you can let go of that child play. Easily you can abandon it from your mind without hurting you. Because you do it with a deep, profound understanding. That's called virag. Uh, Viraganupasi, Nirodhanupasi. Uh, Udayave, Banga, Bhaya, Adinava, Nibhida, then Nibhida, Munchutukamita. Munchutukamita means uh, uh, a desire arises in you for liberating yourself from this whole uh, scenario, whole situation. You want to liberate yourself. And you think, I don't have anything to do with this sort of things anymore. And that's the side. Udayavya uh, Banga Bhaya Adina Munjana. Then Patisankhanu Pekka. Patisankhanu Pekka means seeing, you reflecting on all conditioned things more uh, deeply, more closely, uh, you reflect on all conditioned things. Then uh, Anuloma. Anuloma means Anuloma means going with the hair. Loma means you learn in 32 parts of the body, Kesa, Loma. Loma means body or, uh, hair, hair of the body. You go along with the hair. That means you, you follow the Aryans, nobles' footsteps. Nobles', nobles uh, uh, stage. That is just before attaining Sotapanna or stream entry state. That's called Anuloma. Then next is Gotrabhu. Gotrabhu means you belong to the noble Aryans clan. And these are called uh, stages of uh, insight. When these stages of insight arise, then your knowledge by your purification of knowledge by knowledge and vision of the way is complete. Then what is left is purification by knowledge and vision. Then uh, it is just like uh, uh, you are uh, climbing, 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 climbing a mountain and then you, after reaching the mountain, you want to take a deep breath and say, Ah, finally, 
I have reached. I have reached. That kind of uh, relaxing, comforting, uh, content experience is called purification, not knowledge and vision. Now, so when Vendable Manta Sariputta asked Vendable Manta Niputta, this each question, Vendable Manta Niputta said, no, 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 no. Then Venerable Sariputta asked him, Venerable Sir, for each question you say no, 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 can you explain that to me? Then Venerable Mantaniputta tells him, As to that friend, I shall give you a simile. For some wise men understanding the meaning of a statement by means of a simile, suppose that King Pasayanadi of Kosala, while living at Savatthi, had some urgent business to attend, settle in Saketa. And that between Saketa and Savatthi and Saketa, seven relay chariots were kept ready for him. Then King Pasayanadi Kosala, leaving Savatthi through the inner palace door, would mount the first relay chariot, and by means of the first relay chariot, he would arrive at the second relay chariot. Then he would dismount from the first uh, chariot and mount the second chariot. By means of that second chariot, he would arrive at the third chariot and so forth. Then he dismount that and remount the uh, third by means of third chariot, he would arrive at the fourth chariot. By means of the fourth chariot, he would arrive at the fifth chariot. By means of fifth chariot, he would arrive at the sixth chariot. By means of sixth chariot, he would arrive at the seventh chariot. And by means of the seventh chariot, he would arrive at inner palace door in Saketa. Now he started in Savati, ended in Saketa. And he changed seven, six chariots and ended up in Saketa in seven chariot. Then when he had come to the inner palace door, his friend and acquaintances, his kinsmen and relatives would ask him, Sir, did you come from Savatthi to inner palace door of Saket in Saketa by means of the relay chariot? How then should King Pasayanadi Kosala answers in order to answer correctly? Then he has to say, I started in one chariot, came and dismounted from that, got on to second, then came to the third, and for so forth and so on, he has to explain. So Venerable Purnamanta and Putta said similarly, friends, purification of virtue is for the sake of purification of mind. Because without purifying the virtue, you, we cannot purify the mind. So purification of mind depends on the purification of virtue. Purification of mind is for the sake of purification of views. So purification of view depends on the purification of mind. And so forth. Uh, each of them, purification of view is, the, is for the sake of reaching the purification of overcoming doubt 
purification of by uh, overcoming doubt is for the sake of reaching purification of knowledge and vision and so forth. Each of them helps the each the, each preceding stage of purification helps each succeeding stage of purification. Each succeeding stage of purification depends on each preceding purification. Therefore, all the seven stages of purification are uh, interdependent, not independent. Now the way the discourse ended is also very, very uh, beautiful, wonderful. When Venerable Kunda Mantani put the uh, explained these things very clearly, Venerable Sariputta uh, asked him, uh, What is the Venerable One's name? How do his companions in the holy life know the Venerable One? Now, uh, Venerable Sariputta had not seen Venerable Purnamantaniputta before. This is the first time they met. So Purnama, Venerable Sariputta asked him, uh, in, in short, what is your name? Purnamantaniputta was so humble and he simply said, my name is Punna, friend, but my companions in the holy life know me as Mantani Putta. Mantani was his mother's name, and uh, therefore he is called Mantani Putta. Putta means son. Mantani son. So when the Basari Putta said, It is wonderful, friend. It is marvelous. Each profound question has been answered point by point by the Venerable Punna Mantani Putta as a learned disciple who understands the teaching teacher's dispensation correctly. It is a gain for his companions in, his, in the holy life. It is a great gain for them that they have the opportunity to see and honor the Venerable Punna Mantani Putta. Even if it were by carrying the Venerable Punna Mantani Putta about on a cushion on their heads, that his companions in his holy life would get the opportunity to see and honor him. It would be a gain for them, a great gain for them, and it is gain for us great gain for us that we have the opportunity to see and honor the Venerable Punna Mantani Putta. Venerable Sariputta was one of the two chief disciples of the Buddha. Punna Mantani Putta was not elevated that status. But he observed ten wonderful, noble principles. What are they? He was uh, Apicca, Santutta, Paviveta, Viryaramba, uh, uh, wise. He was full of Sila, Samadhi, Panya, Vimutti, Vimutti, Jnana, Dasana. These are the ten noble qualities he had. And therefore he was very famous for these noble qualities. So, in turn, Vendabal Punna Mantani Putta prays Vendabal Sariputta, the same way. First he asked, uh, what is your Vendabal's name? My name is Upatissa. That was what he was called when he was a lay person. My companions in the holy life uh, known, uh, know me as Sariputta. Sari was his mother's name, so this is Sari's son.
So the, in those days, uh, children were named by the mother's name. When the children are famous, uh, mothers are known by the children's name. When uh, they, they may be matriarchic family, matria, uh, the mother's mother must be the head of the family, and therefore mother was known, famous, and children took mother's name. So that is how they are. So when the Barsari Punna Mantani put also praised when the Barsari put the same way and appreciated his company. And this first encounter between them. So, friends, uh, I must uh, stop here. I have been instructed by our retreat coordinator to have one hour uh, talk in the afternoon and uh, have give some time for people to study. Okay? So, no, you, you study time, right? Okay. So, uh,